de Los Angeles, Veron, was a 23-year-old woman living in the Tucumán province in the northwest of Argentina. On the 3rd of April, 2002, she left her mother's home to attend a hospital appointment when, according to witnesses, she was kidnapped by a group of people who dragged her into a red car. Evidence would later suggest these were human traffickers whose aim was to force her into a life of prostitution. In today's episode, we will look at one mother's crusade to save her daughter. Hey everybody and welcome to episode 21 of the Students' Verdict podcast. Here we are with our first episode of 2021. Thank you so much for joining me on another true crime adventure. To all of you new listeners, welcome, pull up a chair. My name is Emily and I'm your host. If you haven't already, please go and listen to some of our earlier episodes, including The Deadly Drug Trial and Larissa Schuster, The Acid Lady. Please follow me on all the socials, Instagram at The Student Verdict Pod, Twitter at Student Verdict, and on Facebook where I have a page and a group for us to chat and share. If you missed anything I just said, links are in the show notes. As always, if you enjoy the show, which it seems like you are because we've had a real boost in listeners, so thank you so much. If you enjoy the show, please consider leaving me a review. If you don't like the show, then please keep your opinions to yourself. As always, resources used in this episode will be linked in the show notes. In the show notes, you will also find links to the Students' Verdict merchandise and the Patreon page. Any support you'd like to give is hugely appreciated. A quick warning, this case comes with a trigger warning as we will be discussing human sex trafficking, so listener discretion is advised. With all of that said, let's jump into today's episode. Today we are going to be talking about the kidnapping of Maria de los Angeles Veron, who went by Marita. At 23 years old, she was living in her hometown of Tucumán province in the northwest of Argentina. On the 3rd of April 2002, she left her mother's house to attend a doctor's appointment when she mysteriously disappeared. Three days later, she was found by police in the area of La Ramada, over 30 kilometres away from where she was kidnapped. It appeared as though she had escaped from a sex party. Police then left her on a bus that was headed to Tucumán, but Marita would never reach her destination and her mother would never see her daughter again. Immediately after her daughter's disappearance, Susanna Tramarco launched a crusade to find her daughter, saying, quote, April 3rd, 2002 was the saddest day of my life. I will never forget that day, as it was when my daughter's life was destroyed. Susanna and her husband Daniel, who sadly passed away in 2010, called neighbours, the police and various hospitals, but unfortunately, no one knew their daughter's whereabouts. Susanna recalled, quote, We walked back and forth to hospitals, streets, we talked with her girlfriends, nothing. I was desperate. At the police station, they didn't want to take our report. They said she had gone voluntarily with a boyfriend or with her girlfriends. Then they said they had no paper to take down a report or gas to go out and look for her in a car. It was a few days later that a witness came forward and reported seeing Marita being pushed into a red car by three men. Three weeks later, a prostitute told Marita's parents that she had been sold to traffickers. Before we go any further into this story, let's just talk about trafficking. Human trafficking in, in Argentina is the illegal trade in persons for the purposes of reproductive slavery, sexual exploitation, forced labour, organ removal, or any form of modern slavery. Worldwide, human trafficking is ranked third among felony crimes behind arms and drug trafficking. It's estimated to account for the movement of more than $32 billion worldwide. A United Nations International Protocol Against Human Trafficking was signed by 117 different countries, including Argentina. 
this treaty obligates the countries that are party to it to prevent and combat human trafficking and to assist and protect the victims of it. The basic elements of trafficking are recruitment, which can be done by either deception or force, transport, from where the individual was kidnapped to the site of the exploitation, which could be between regions or countries, and operation. Here the victim is subjected to exploitation by the pimp or the operator, who takes an illegal right of property over the victim. In the transport element, there is often collusion between the transporters, corrupt officials and intermediaries to the trafficking. Here is a quick PSA. I am not Spanish. I cannot speak Spanish fluently. I learned Spanish up till I was about 16 years old. I am now 25. So if my pronunciation is poor, I am so, so sorry. I wish I could speak Spanish. I think it's an amazing language, but I can't. So apologies. With little help from the police, Marita's parents were forced to conduct their own investigation into their daughter's disappearance. Susanna disguised herself as a prostitute to gain access to various brothels, where she hoped to find clues as to her daughter's whereabouts. With the evidence Susanna and her husband gathered, police raided a number of suspected brothels where Marita could have been held. The brothels in La Rioja were known as cabarets or whiskerias, but inside their walls, they held deep, dark secrets. They are now known as places for the practice of prostitution, where there was the systematic recruitment of women, including by means of depriving them of their liberty. Three whiskerias were identified in La Rioja. Candy, El Candilejas, or The Limelight, and El Desafio, or The Challenge. All of them were identified as fronts for prostitution. A woman, freed from one of the whiskerias during the raid, reported having seen Marita in Candy. She gave a physical description, dyed hair and blue contact lenses. This woman told authorities that, sadly, Marita had been removed from the whiskerias shortly before the police raid. The search was given another lead when the alleged Madam of Candy, Lydia Medina, was heard to say, those fools are looking for her and she's in Spain. Lydia Medina, her son and his wife were all arrested for unlawful deprivation of liberty and aggravated promotion of prostitution. Other branches of the investigation incriminated Daniela Milhain from Tucumán, who allegedly had intended to transport Marita to Rio Galejos. She was detained along with her husband and a La Rioja province official who was transporting women. Based on the tip, Susana Tramarco knocked on the door of the Spanish embassy in Buenos Aires and even had the Spanish Prime Minister, José Luis Rodríguez Zapatero, issue an invitation to come to Madrid. Unfortunately, when Susana arrived, no one was able to, re- to provide any clues as to Marita's whereabouts. In February 2012, seven men and six women were charged with kidnapping Marita Veron and promoting prostitution. The trial took place in the city of San Miguel de Tucumán. The trial went on for a staggering three months as more than 130 witnesses took the stand to give evidence including a dozen women who had been rescued from the brothels by Susanna Tramarco. During the trial, Susanna Tramarco herself also gave evidence. She described in detail the story of her 10-year search for her daughter. In the courtroom, she stood strong, confronting the defendants, politicians and police as she explained how she investigated the harrowing business of human trafficking with the sole aim of finding her daughter. Whilst giving evidence, Susanna talked about her family, her husband Daniel Veron, who had passed away two years before. She also talked about their children, Horace and Marita. She described what happened the day that Marita disappeared. She suspected that a nurse who lived in the same neighbourhood as Marita, Patricia Soria, may have had some involvement. Quote, Marita wanted to get an IUD and insisted that Marita go to Maternidad, the maternity centre. 
I did not like this woman at all, since she asked Marita so many details of her private life and of her family, she stated. Susanna testified against Miguel Ardiles, a supposed employee of Maternidad, who helped Marita get an appointment. Quote, they called her at three to give her the appointment and they asked her to bring her document. This document was her identity card, the Documento Nacional de Identidad, which is required for hospital admissions to carry out banking procedures and as travel documentation. Susanna remarked that this seemed unusual to her. Before we get any further into the story, I'd like to take a minute just to tell you about a podcast that I think you're really going to like. It's called That's So Effed Up. That is so fucked up. It's fucked up. I'm so fucked up. It is just so damn fucked up. That's fucked up. This is That's So Fucked Up, a podcast about cults, murder, and other fucked up stuff. Like, really, really fucked up stuff. He cut off her nipples, tore out her heart, tied it to a rope, and hung it on the wall. This cult has everything. Magic, rituals, child sacrifice, cloaks, daggers, and even a little arms dealing. The fucking sharks ate Mark under the dinghy. Strangled him to death so violently that he ended up asphyxiating on his own vomit. <sighs> We're your hosts. I'm Ashley Richards. And I'm Cameron Dexter. Join us every Fucked Up Friday on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere you listen to podcasts. That's Fucked Up. When the court resumed after a recess, Susanna spoke of the search for her daughter. She spared no words against the former governor, Julio Miranda, and officials of his cabinet. Quote, like a stupid person, I went to the governor's mansion. I say stupid because the mafia was there. She spoke of Reuben La Chancha, or the pig, ale. Susanna alleged he was head of the hooligan group associated with the San Martin soccer club. She believed that this man was chiefly responsible for her daughter's disappearance. Now, it should be noted that Reuben Ale did not stand trial in this case, but after a money laundering scheme was uncovered as part of Susanna's investigation, Reuben Ale, his ex, and three others were arrested in connection with the scheme. Going back to the trial then, Susanna went on to explain that La Chancha Ale and the Mafia handled all the drugs and prostitution in the province, quote, I don't know why the people of Tucuman don't stand up to them. I'm going to stand up to them. Short and small as I am, I'm going to defend my daughter. Susanna told the court that a woman had told her what happened to her daughter. The woman gave details of where she had been captive and that she was abducted for sexual exploitation in La Rioja. I could not believe these things existed, Susanna told the court. She went on to explain that when she arrived at a brothel in La Rioja, she did not find Marita, but she did find another girl, I think it's pronounced Anahi, who ran into her arms and begged Susanna to rescue her. Anahi told Susanna that she had seen her daughter the previous week and related the ordeal she had lived through. Susanna told the court, quote, Unfortunately, I became a specialist in this crime because I touched it, I lived it, and I search for my daughter, I'll never give up the search. Whoever falls, falls. My mission is my daughter. I do not want to close my eyes before finding out about her. There are many missing girls who we are helping, but I care about my daughter, Tramarco said firmly. On the 11th of December 2012, after a long emotional trial, a three-judge Tucuman Provincial Court cleared all 13 of the defendants of all the charges, saying, quote, There were no elements to prove the kidnapping of Marita. The ver versions are about just such. It took 10 years. The dossier has 55 bodies, and still it was poorly investigated. No evidence was obtained that could prove she was kidnapped to force her into prostitution. 
people in the courtroom sobbed and shouted after the verdict was announced, and attorneys representing Susanna Tremarco accused the three judges of corruption. A week after the verdict, Susanna met with Argentina's president, and impeachment proceedings were started against the three judges in the trial. The president of Argentina, Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner, wanted to use the acquittals as a reason to push forward a reform to democratise justice, but the bill would later be declared unconstitutional by the Supreme Court. The following day after the verdict, angry demonstrators in Argentina clashed with police. They were distraught at the acquittals of the 13 defendants, accused of kidnapping Marita and forcing her into prostitution 10 years prior. In the capital, Buenos Aires, protests turned violent. Anonymous people published the personal data, addresses, telephone and bank statements of the judges who had presided over the Verón case. The anonymous group also hacked the government webpages. The judges stood by their verdict, with Chief Judge Alberto Piedra Buena saying, quote, We could not establish what really happened, but it was not a case of people trafficking. President Cristina Fernandez told reporters that when she heard the verdict, she telephoned Susanna Tramarco to offer her support, saying, quote, I thought I would find her destroyed, but I found her more together than ever, more committed to keep fighting. I told her, Susanna, you can always count on me. And she told me, President, don't worry, I'm going to keep fighting. Famous figures such as Michelle Obama presented their respect and support to Susanna Tramarco for her unrelenting work against human trafficking. A year later, in November 2013, there were a number of raids on brothels in and around Buenos Aires. Almost 100 women forced into prostitution were rescued. The women had been trafficked from Paraguay and Peru. The 57 raids took place over two weeks, and led to the arrests of 25 people. The trafficking of young women was clearly still a huge concern in Argentina, with 30 establishments portraying themselves as bars as they operated as undercover brothels. These places subsequently had their licences revoked. Fake documents and drugs were also seized during the course of the raids with the Buenos Aires City Justice Minister telling reporters that these raids were combating several crimes. He also indicated that some officials themselves were being investigated. In December 2013, the Supreme Court of Tucumán reviewed the case and overturned the acquittals. When the case returned to court, 10 out of the 13 suspects were convicted of the kidnapping and sexual exploitation of Marita Verón. The court established that three lower-ranking judges must be the ones to establish the penalties for the ten guilty parties. Susanna Tremerko's lawyers asked for sentences ranging from 20 to 25 years. After the convictions, Susanna said the following, quote, They are accomplices to the trafficking. They kidnap women, tear them from their families, sell them and exploit them. I harbour the hope that they will say something about my daughter, but the justice system is not looking for her. I am looking for her. I went to Spain on a lead that suggested she had been sold there, but the attorney in Burgos had neither her photograph nor her fingerprints. The court sentenced two brothers, Jose and Gonzalo Gomez, to 22 years in prison each. Seven other defendants received sentences of at least 10 years and the 10th defendant was given 15 days house arrest. The judges said four of the defendants had conspired to hold and conceal Marita for the exercise of prostitution, while six more had participated in her abduction and forced prostitution. After the sentences had been handed down, Susanna said the following, quote, I never found Marita, but justice has been done. 
I do not mean with this that I'm not going to keep fighting. We will continue until the day we will know what they did with Marita. I found Susanna Tramarco to be an incredible, incredible woman who took her daughter's case into her own hands. She couldn't have known how many lives she would touch when she started searching for Marita. She has been unrelenting in her passion to combat human trafficking. In 2007, she created a foundation in her daughter's name to help the victims of sex slavery and to continue to draw attention to the court's lack of interest. The foundation boasts having achieved the release of hundreds of people. The same year, Susanna was given the first U.S. Secretary of State International Women of Courage Award for her efforts against human trafficking. In 2007, Argentina passed a law that makes the abduction and sexual exploitation of persons a federal offence. The law also established a rescue office in the Ministry of Justice and Human Rights to oversee the prevention and investigation of human trafficking crimes and to provide legal assistance to victims. In 2008, Susanna's work led to Argentinian legislation that prohibited human trafficking. In 2011, President Cristina Fernández de Kirchner enacted Rubro 59, which banned the advertisement of sexual services in newspapers and magazines. For the first time, the Ministry of Security was able to uncover that police forces were actually implicated in the trafficking rings. The Argentinian National Senate honoured Susana with the Premio Domingo Faustino Sarmiento for her work in the promotion of human rights and in March 2012, the Canadian government honoured Susanna with the John Diefenbaker Defender of Human Rights and Freedom Award. If all of this wasn't enough, Susanna was nominated for the 2013 Nobel Peace Prize. Before we end this episode, I want to talk about a 2020 Trafficking in Persons report for Argentina, which I will link in the show notes. The Trafficking in Persons report is the United States government's principal diplomatic tool to engage foreign governments on human trafficking. Each country is ranked in its efforts to comply with the minimum standards for the elimination of trafficking. The tier system falls into three tiers, tiers one, two, three, and a tier two watch list. According to this report, Argentina fully meets the minimum standards for the elimination of trafficking. The government continues to demonstrate serious and sustained efforts, and therefore Argentina remains on Tier 1. Efforts included passing a new law to mandate and fund victim restitution in criminal cases and the expanding of a trafficking investigations database to include provincial data. As good as this all sounds, and it does sound good, it is good, the report states that Argentina investigated, prosecuted and convicted fewer traffickers in 2020 than in 2019. The government convicted 53 traffickers in 29 cases, 23 cases for sex trafficking and 4 for labour trafficking, compared with 71 traffickers in 48 cases, 30 for sex trafficking and 18 for labour trafficking in 2018 and 38 traffickers in 32 cases in 2017. Official complicity in trafficking crimes is still a concern, including those involved in the Witness Protection Programme serving the victims. Although prosecutors opened at least four new trafficking cases involving current or former public officials, the government didn't report any convictions. Courts in Buenos Aires convicted two public officials accused of trafficking as accessories. These included a former police chief accused of exploiting transgender women in sex trafficking at brothels and a first sergeant accused of sex trafficking. In another case, seven accused traffickers benefited from police protection and political connections in the management of two Buenos Aires brothels. Another case was brought against two public officials connected to the commercial sexual exploitation of victims in private residences. Here are some other issues. 
The government didn't allocate a dedicated budget to anti-trafficking efforts, they haven't provided dedicated housing for male victims, and the National Anti-Trafficking Law considered force, fraud or coercion to be aggravating factors rather than essential elements of the crime. There are 13 recommendations. I'm not going to go through all of them, but these include strengthening efforts to investigate, prosecute and convict traffickers, documenting and addressing official complicity in trafficking through prosecution and conviction, to restructure the witness protection program to prevent abuse by agents and encompass trafficking victims' needs and to improve victim assistance to include more specialised shelters and dedicated shelters for male victims. I'd like to end by reminding you that despite Susanna Tramarco's monumental efforts, her daughter, Marita Veron, like so many others, is still missing, and like so many others, deserves to come home. Here is a quote from Susanna. The justice is not doing what it has to do. It's not possible for my daughter to remain missing like this. I want her back, no matter what condition she is in. And that's the end of today's episode. Thank you so much for joining me today. The Students' Verdict is a bi-weekly podcast, so follow us on social media to hear about our next episode. The Students' Verdict can be found anywhere you listen to podcasts, including Spreaker, YouTube and iHeartRadio. See you on the next one, and remember to keep living the dream.